This is War is a Racket, written in 1935 by Major General Smedley Butler. This is Chapter 5, To Hell with War. I am not a fool as to believe that war is a thing of the past. I know the people do not want war, but there is no use in saying we cannot be pushed into another war. Looking back, Woodrow Wilson was re-elected president in 1916 on a platform that he had kept us out of war, and on the implied promise that he would keep us out of war. Yet, five months later, he asked Congress to declare war on Germany. In that five-month interval, the people had not been asked whether they had changed their minds. The four million young men who put on uniforms and marched or sailed away were not asked whether they wanted to go forth to suffer and die. Then what caused our government to change its mind so suddenly? Money. An Allied Commission, it may be recalled, came over shortly before the war declaration and called on the President. The President summoned a group of advisors. The head of the Commission spoke. Stripped of its diplomatic language, this is what he told the President and his group. There is no use kidding ourselves any longer. The cause of the Allies is lost. We now owe you, American bankers, American munitions makers, American manufacturers, American speculators, American exporters, five or six billion dollars. If we lose, and without the help of the United States we must lose, we, England, France, and Italy, cannot pay back this money, and Germany won't. So, had secrecy been outlawed as far as war negotiations were concerned, and had the press been invited to be present at that conference, or had radio been available to broadcast the proceedings, America would never have entered the World War. But this conference, like all war discussions, was shrouded in utmost secrecy. When our boys were sent off to war, they were told it was a war to make the world safe for democracy, and a war to end all wars. Well, 18 years after, the world has less of democracy than it had then. Besides, what business is it of ours whether Russia or Germany or England or France or Italy or Austria live under democracies or monarchies, whether they are fascist or communist? Our problem is to preserve our own democracy. And very little, if anything, has been accomplished to assure us that the World War was really the war to end all wars. Yes, we have had disarmament conferences and limitations of arms conferences. They don't mean a thing. One has just failed, the results of another have been nullified. We send our professional soldiers and our sailors and our politicians and our diplomats to these conferences. And what happens? The professional soldiers and sailors don't want to disarm. No admiral wants to be without a ship. No general wants to be without a command. Both mean men without jobs. They are not for disarmament. They cannot be for limitations of arms. And at all these conferences, lurking in the background but all powerful just the same, are the sinister agents of those who profit by war. They see to it that these conferences do not disarm or seriously limit armaments. The chief aim of any power at any of these conferences has not been to achieve disarmament to prevent war, but rather to get more armament for itself and less for any potential foe. There is only one way to disarm with any semblance of practicability. That is for all nations to get together and scrap every ship, every gun, every rifle, every tank, every warplane. Even this, if it were possible, would not be enough. The next war, according to experts, will be fought not with battleships, not by artillery, not with rifles and not with machine guns. It will be fought with deadly chemicals and gases. Secretly, each nation is studying and perfecting newer and ghastlier means of annihilating its foes wholesale. Yes, ships will continue to be built, for the shipbuilders must make their profits, and guns still will be manufactured and powder and rifles will be made, for the munitions makers must make their huge profits. And the soldiers, of course, must wear uniforms, for the manufacturer must make their war profits too. But victory or defeat will be determined by the skill and ingenuity of our scientists. If we can put them to work making poison gas and more and more fiendish mechanical and explosive instruments of destruction, they will have no time for the constructive job of building greater prosperity for all peoples. By putting them to this useful job, we can all make more money out of peace than we can out of war, even the munitions makers. So I say, to hell with war. Oh, a million marching armies and a million marching men Have won the dark-skinned countries and lost them back again but now the word has gone to every fallen land that this old world is changing hands. 
From the master to the servant, from the owner to the slave. Colonial days are buried in a deep and dirty grave. It's so easy to see and well to understand that this old world is changing hands. A Washington and Jefferson and Patrick Henry too. They knew what they were doing when they started something new. It was in this giant land of ours that it all began when this old world was changing hands. From the master to the servant, from the owner to the slave, colonial days are buried in a deep and dirty grave. It's so easy to see and well to understand that this old world is changing hands. When World War II was rolling by, the tide was on its way. Many countries had to listen to the words they had to say. And the word was spread to millions, all of yellow, black, and tan, that this old world was changing hands. From the master to the servant, from the owner to the slaves, colonial days are buried in a deep and dirty grave. It's so easy to see and well to understand that this old world is changing hands. Now Africa and Asia and the Caribbean shores no longer can be counted as the spoils of the wars. They were bought and sold together, now together they will stand cause this old world is changing hands. From the master to the servant, from the owner to the slave, colonial days are buried in a deep and dirty grave. It's so easy to see and well to understand that this old world is changing hands, that this old world is changing hands.